Hello friends and welcome to the homestead. If today is the first time you are visiting with us, we want to extend to you a very warm welcome and invite you to watch any of our over 500 videos arranged for your convenience in playlists as we are confident you are going to find something both entertaining and useful to watch. If you have been here but you have not subscribed, what are we waiting for? Please subscribe. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. So here we are in my office and we have a, a plethora of projects in the homestead but one of the challenges when you move to a new space or as you are in your existing space and you're looking how to make it more useful how to utilize the space better what's the better term yeah. one of the easiest projects that you can do is add storage space and one of the most neglected spaces as we discussed last week is the area above trim that is usually non utilized at all. I wouldn't even say underutilized, right? Mm -hmm. It's non utilized. So we have this, but also in my office, I have this corner that it's a really dead space. I mean, you can put a couple of pictures of it, but you wouldn't add utility, it would just make it prettier. Since we have this shelf up here, and I have more of these brackets, I decided to make a little bit of. Uh, call it almost a bookcase you know some we're going to add a couple of more shelves here to improve improve the utility of the room without taking any floor space or without making the room feel any smaller in addition in a moment we'll take you to the apprentice's room where we have another idea for his space here in the apprentice's room we also have an area that's totally dead space but it is too small unlike my office to put more shelves in it Mm -hmm. In other words, it wouldn't make much sense, right? Right. It wouldn't be much space. So here we're going to also put cells, but we're going to use a different process. And we're going to build corner shelving that directly attached to the wall without brackets. So that will also provide a little bit of space, increase, improve the utility of the room, and uh, without yet taking any floor space or any other space from the, the room. So what do we need to know here? I'm using a... This is what is called a, a seamstress, seamstress tape. I don't know what it's called. Seven and a fourth. We need to know the dimension for this by eight. By 11, sorry. I don't know where the eight came. And we're going to go back in my office and take... Oh, we don't need... Yeah, we need the measurement. So back there in my two. office, we also need the measurement. And that is the distance from the trim to the wall. And that is what we said, 20 and a quarter. Mm -hmm. okay. Right, great. Okay. So we're going to measure and cut the correct dimension for our uh, wood. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to use our truck saw to cut it. Of course, you can use a variety of different saws to achieve so the same So using process. a square, we're going to draw a line. And if you want to remove the square. That ensures that our line is perpendicular to the edge of the board. And we are going to set the track saw so track and we're going to get ready to do our first cut. Does that make sense? Yes. Now you can do the same with a, with a miter saw but uh, for this because it is 12 inches wide I think, right? Mm -hmm. You'll either have to flip it once or you will have to use a... The one that has the glide that comes out. Yeah, yeah. what is called. I don't remember what it's called either. We used to have one but we left it in Kansas. Yes. We no longer have it. Oh, 
All right. Do you want me to check for fit before we proceed? Great, cut. Look at this. I see. Let, let them see. Let, let them see. <laughs> okay. Perhaps you do? Yeah. And this is a little uh, dirty board, so we probably need to use the magic eraser thing to okay. so clean it. To yeah, if you want to check. So Mrs. Wizard uh, was uh, concerned about the the, bla the truck moving, but once you set it and you have the saw on, the truck in the back has friction, uh, what do you yeah, call like it? Like a rubber grip? Yeah. So once it is set and it has some weight on it, it doesn't move easily. Okay. I mean, it moves, but it doesn't move easily. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to prevent it from moving at all, you can put the clamps that came with it. Mm -hmm. And usually in a longer cut, it would make sense to do that, right? Yeah, if definitely I would want to do that if it was a much longer cut. That one was short. And as is our practice, we're going to use the piece that we cut and we dry fit in the area to ensure that it is what we need. And we're going to use the same piece to mark the other piece, right? Uh, people like to say, measure twice, cut once. And I say, measure once and don't measure again. How about that for a merge? Or alternatively, don't measure at all. Just eyeball How about that, that for a merge? have to move. Otherwise, you're gonna cut into your head. Okay. And I'm pretty sure you don't want that. I said, especially with this saw that, no, you're too far. I think that's fine. That's we wanted this to be on a stable thing so it will not move. Okay. And we're not... I prefer it parallel to the... Okay. Is it not parallel now? I don't know. Is it low? It's all right to me. Okay. Close enough to parallel. Oh, it's right there. I'll do it with my left hand. Yes. And I hear a storm a brewing. There is a storm a brewing. Maybe it'll cool it off because it is hot today. So get your tracks out on there before I take my hand off. Okay. On it to wait a little bit. Okay. Tell me when you're ready. Okay. okay. Now we need the black. Look good? Yeah. We need the black uh, squares. So as it often happens with plants, when you start the execution, you might realize that it just doesn't look right or it doesn't provide the utility you want. And this is the case for the apprentices room. We marked what we initially wanted to do and that was a, a corner cell, right? Mm -hmm. And we see that it has a very small surface area to be very useful. Yeah. But if we make it a parallelogram, it about doubles the, the surface and provides much more space for him. Mm -hmm. And some know that as a rectangle. Mm -hmm. You're not wrong. Just some know that more as a rectangle. Well, okay. some need to take trigonometry. <laughs> so we're going to use our uh, this saw. Our this saw. Our this saw. The and one we've been using. There, that one. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make the first cut. We're going to make the second cut using the first as our uh, uh, sample. And then we're going to use the table saw to, to do the cross cut. No, I'm sorry, the grain cut. Well, again, friends, as we are uh, progressing through the project and looking at our cuts, we realize that instead of making this, the cut this way, it will make sense to make the cut this way, right? Mm -hmm. And we will have substantial, actually it doesn't look like it will only be one cut. Because 12 is not 12. It's 11 and 4, right? I mean, you Apparently. Know. So that will maximize your board instead of having right. a lot of off cuts. And will reduce our cuts by one cut. That too. Mm -hmm. Alright. So we're going to do that. We're not going to show you, we're just going to show you that as we're looking at it, we decided it makes more sense to change the orientation 
and that will reduce our lock lo workload. We're going to have to do only one cut. Okay. So we have not the uh, we have not used the saw for some time, so we're making sure that our blade is perfectly perpendicular, 90 degrees to the table. It is a good practice to do before every cut, but specifically since we've not used it for what six months now. And it got moved around quite a bit. Yeah, and it was moved and dented a little bit and abused by the, the moving company. You see no light there, which is what we want, right? And so you see a little bit of light there, but that is because our plate is not true. It's not all the way up. The plate is recessed right. down into the table. But when you go into the table here, you see there is no light anywhere. So we know that we are straight. And our first North Carolina cut, perfect. Yep, that was right where we wanted it. Your blade yep. is in good shape and you're doing well and the saw works well because you see we have no burn marks, right? Yep. Burn marks indicate that either the wood is too hard or you're going too slow or your blade is dull. When we had a dull blade, I don't remember if it was this or the old saw. It was this one. Most everything was burned. Well, definitely with the old one, but we've had it a couple times with this one. So we have a few, too many marks here like a toddler's drew on it. So we have to spend a little bit of time using uh, the our very high-tech eraser. Implementation, yeah, mm -hmm. this is high-tech stuff. We spare no expense here at the Urban Homesteading Channel, right? Mm -hmm. Plus you got a little shake going on. I do have a little shake going on. Not you. Oh. <laughs> the eraser is going, is shaking. Yeah, it's shaking. Shaking shake, it, shake, baby. Shake, 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 shake yeah. your booty. I think actually the magic eraser thing worked better when it I probably did. probably will to take the rest of that off, but just to get the surface stuff. Okay. This works fine. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to try to decide how I want this attached, and uh, then we're going to so get. So we back decided to, to put some supports uh, underneath this shelf, in addition to two um, Craig screws to provide some uh, strength and we're measuring about an inch of width will be plenty for that uh, operation so we're measuring both sides of our blade and we want it about two inches one inch uh, one inch sorry from the fence right right and so you could see that when i was measuring i'm measuring from this side the inside of the blade the one inch mark ma matches up with the fence there Yep. And the inside of the blade, why? Because that's where um, the keeper part is going to be. The blade's going to go through there and that's the part we And we're referencing from this point. Yes. From the fence to the blade. And you want your blade to clear your, your piece, right? Right, but you don't need it to be yeah. six inches above it. You just want it to clear to keep yourself safe. Less blade exposed means... And let's see if our push stick will clear this. Yeah, I mean, we will be able to clear this, so. Okay. All right. And this is one of the shorter ones because it's got this knot in it, but it's uh -huh. still that one inch wide. No, it, it is not a visible component, <laughs> and we don't care about that. What Alpida was doing there, we, we don't have a feather board, so she acted as our feather board. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what a feather board is, it's a piece of uh, equipment that holds the, the piece you're working the way uh, Elpida was holding this piece. Just we don't need more. Yeah, we do. We need three. The only tip if you're doing that, if so, a friend of yours is using a piece of wood to be a feather board, you, have, you need to be very careful not to put pressure on the back end of the blade. Mm -hmm. because that can become very dangerous. The blade will want to, to lift the wood and, and thrust it the direction of your cutting person. Does that make sense? The idea is that this board is just very lightly 
up right. against here so that it can move freely, but it's just supporting. It doesn't way. allow it to move right. that way. Right. All right. It's very convenient, it broke. So we won't have to cut it. Yeah. Is that very nice of the wood? Very nice of the wood. Love it. So we're using pocket screws on, on to, to close to the edge because we know we have lumber there. Mm -hmm. Because and it's, it's a corner right? and then there is a window which has casing around it. Right. So again, the only thing that you need to remember here is you need to make the, your screws on the same side, right? The pocket holes. On the pocket the hole, yeah. I don't know why the clutch is engaging, but it is. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do that for all pieces. So this is the one that's a hair off. Mm -hmm. You can decide where you want. You want that up against the wall. I think there is only one way because, well, there is not a front. Interesting. No, because we. Well, cut yeah, we cut two sides of it off. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. We can paint it if he doesn't like it. Actually, this is clutching for some reason. Can you bring me the rail? No, bring me the other rigid, please. Okay. It shouldn't be clutching. So these anymore. small shelves are not designed to carry a tremendous amount of weight. They are designed for little uh, DVDs, CDs, games, or knickknacks for decoration. And we decided that pr the pr primary strength will come from pocket holes because in our specific application we have good wood to go through. Mm -hmm. So we have two pockets hole oriented this way and one this way and uh, that will make ourselves look like it's elevated. Right? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do the, the remaining two and we're going to be right back with you. All right. And because we know we have wood here and here and here, we're using pocket screws to attach it to the wall and it will be kind of a, a, floating, a floating shelf. shelf. Mm -hmm. Now this is visible and if you want we can actually use plugs. I have plugs. Well, but, you know. Yeah, we have to see how the apprentice wants to handle it. I need to be in front of you because I cannot <laughs> screw. I cannot screw. Another thing, please. Yes, just a moment. Just think, you need to be watching what you're doing so he doesn't get upset. Actually, this can even take books, I think. This is very okay. sturdy. Mm -hmm. All, right, so All right, so we're going to do the other two the same way, and we're going to show you the final outcome. Then we're going to move in my office to show you the solution there. So here we are, our, we decided to go with three selves. We can add more if we decide later, but for now we, we went with three. And up to here you cannot see the pocket screws at all. Here you can, and I've not decided if we're going to use plugs or not. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, we have plugs, it's not a critical thing. You definitely can if you want it to look more perfect. But it is definitely nice and sturdy, right? Mm -hmm. For, for the purpose of this, they will easily uh, handle games or memorabilia, but actually I think even books. Yeah. Because of their size, they're just not... Right. And because they're in uh, they're wedged. the framework. Yeah, they're wedged the really framework. well, and yeah. we know that we screwed them into studs. So. Right. So this is the apprentice project, and again, this is a space that you could do nothing with, um, unless I'm wrong, right? I mean, what... In general, no. What would you do here? And yet it doesn't make the, sm the room smaller or takes any space away from the room. So it is a good solution for small spaces. Maybe that's our thing, good solutions for small spaces. Good solutions for small spaces. Okay, and here we are with the finished project. This is a, a simple but very rewarding pro pro project. Pro, 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 project. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah. Uh, it, again, like we saw in the apprentice's room, 
it provides with a space that becomes useful all of a sudden when in the past it was not useful without intruding much to your room right I would not have come here in the corner and sat and this is a part of the room I wouldn't have used right mm -hmm. so we're going to put some items on it and uh, we're going to show it to you utilize And here we created a, may I say, elegant mm -hmm. corner in my office that is both functional and allows me to display a couple of knickknacks, protect my turntable and my fireplace, and created a nice little atmosphere corner from a very bare looking thing, right? Ladies, any comments on our projects today? No, it looks really nice, very well thought out. We just need to do a little touch up maybe with some paint. Yes. Well, we'll go to the apprentice's room and see what he has done with his uh, selves and here we're in the apprentice's room and he already utilized his new space mm -hmm. and apprentice what do you think of this addition to your room I think it's well done makes use of a little crook that wouldn't see any uh, kind of use otherwise and uh, of course as you know we changed the plan here we were planning to put uh, uh, triangle looking selves but it just didn't worth the space it wasn't buying us enough space and by by switching to parallelograms or rectangulars as Miss Wizard wants to say we actually double the space that we could have and maximize the use of this little corner mm -hmm. now we do have flexibility we can go all the way down to the floor if the apprentice decides he wants a different look for this specific corner but for now it fits what he has already done and allows some use of this uh, area yeah and Flareon's already moved right in is that his very good there is this his penthouse well he's got quite the view it is it's a great view he can watch um miss kitty uh all day long i li i do like though how they are really floating selves right you know they don't have supports anywhere yeah. that that shows you that even with very simple designs and uh, very limited tools you can make a big improvement in your living space we did happen to use here a track saw that I know mo not every person has a track saw but this can be done with any saw you can even do it using a hand saw right I mean okay. if you have the patient as long as you have a way to cut wood you can achieve this project mm -hmm. it is not a difficult project well friends another one of our episodes has reached its end and we certainly hope you did enjoy this episode you found it useful and entertaining as always we'll continue sharing with you the changes we make in the homestead and also providing you with tips, tricks, and hacks to make your projects easier to build. From the Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, Elpida, and the Urban Homesteading Channel, we want to wish you a great week, stay safe, use your masks, wash your hands, and we are going to see you soon. Farewell, friends.